Hello everyone. Uh, my name is Wenbo. I am one of the software engineers uh, on the gRPC team. Uh, I work at the Google Cloud. Uh, together with Er uh, we prepared this talk on gRPC web for the Kubercon. Uh, er currently is the main maintainer for the gRPC web project. And I created the project. I, I started the project uh, quite a few years ago, back in 2018. Uh, I'd also like to thank the CNCF organizers uh, to give us this opportunity to post this recording. Uh, due to travel reasons, I am not able to give the talk in person at the KubaCon. So today I'm going to cover uh, three parts. First, I'd like to give you an introduction about the gRPC web, uh, specifically you know, the history and also the design goals we had at the time. Uh, then I'm going to talk about the lessons. So we launched the project uh, in, I think, in October 2018. So it's been almost five years. Uh, so over these five years, I, we did learn a lot, and uh, we also have more data that we can share with you. So I'd like to share the lessons and experience we had. Uh, then the last part, we'll talk about the roadmap, you know, specifically to address uh, the gaps in a few areas we heard from you know the users developers. Uh, I started with this sort of broad overview of what gRPC is, and then what is special about you know doing something like gRPC on a web platform. So on the left side, you can see there's a diagram. Uh, this is you know a very high level overview of what GR gRPC provides. So the client we we'll send a request over HTTP2 protocol and then a server will generate a response. And in addition, there is also a service uh, protobuffer based service definition which provide the contract for the RPC. Specifically, you know, the request message, the response message, and also the, 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 the actual service on the server side. Now you look at the right side of the diagram. This is what really uh, things look like when you try to do an RPC on a web client, like for example, on, from a browser. Now, there are two things that are unique between the two diagrams at a very high level. So for a web platform, for a web client, the actual protocol, the communication is managed and controlled by the so-called web platform. Typically, we call this user agent instead of the RPC runtime. Second, almost in all the production deployment, the web client does not really talk to the server directly. There are always some kind of proxies between the client and the server. Sometimes on the client side, you know, we refer to it as forward proxy, but there's also on the server side, which does load balancing all that, uh, which typically refer to as a reverse proxy. And there are also different types of proxies. Some provide firewall functionalities, some does gateway, which does some translation between different protocols. So, so that really make the web platform or making gRPC work from a browser uh, very unique compared to the typical server side, you know, client server RPC communication. So because of the uniqueness of the web platform, we have established a few design goals when we started this project. So I, I want to just give you an overview of sort of the history. Uh, first is we decide that we like to keep the gRPC web protocol, which is a dedicated pro protocol specifically designed for gRPC web clients, uh, to be to match as closely as possible of the so-called uh, core gRPC web protocol, which is based on HTTP two. Uh, the hope is that over time the difference will become smaller and smaller, and then maybe one day a broader clients can directly talk to a server without any translation. So that's one of the the, the motivations, but also try to keep our stack as simple as possible. Uh, instead of we have all different divergent protocols, we try to keep the whole protocol, uh, the core semantics of the protocols uh, very close to each other. Uh, but on top of that, we also understand that web is different, it's unique. There are certain concepts such as like, cost, which is unique to the web, right? Cost is when a security model that allows a web apps talks to a different orange where, which is different than you know where the web page is downloaded. Uh, those are very specific to 
to web clients. You know, it doesn't really apply to other type of you know other type of RPC uh, communications or environments. The second sort of design goals we had at the time is we want to make make sure that the solution we created uh, will allow a tight integration with the web ecosystems. Uh, specifically, we want we are envisioning that the GRPC web will be used for building real web applications that interact with the GRPC based microservices, as opposed to just providing uh, you know development or debugging tools that's browser based. In that case, you know you can imagine uh, the browser actually will talk to the server directly, and you kind of have the full control of what browser versions you want to use and what environment you want to run the client and the server. Uh, which is not really the case when you look at the, the you know the the internet based web applications. The second design goal at the time we made it is that uh, instead of build the gRPC web support in every language for its gRPC implementations, we rely on Envoy to translate the gRPC web protocol to gRPC. Uh, in all, in some cases, the same functionality can be provided by uh, language-specific native web frameworks. Uh, I'll talk about this a little bit more at a later slide. Then the other design goals uh, we had is that really try to keep this whole solution very, as simple as possible. Specifically, we made a decision that we will only support the server streaming. Uh, there are two main reasons. One is that any kind of other streaming modes will require uh, support of, of you know protocol like WebSockets, which will significantly increase the complexity, especially the code size of the libraries. The second is you know we look at all the different use cases for streaming. Really, the majority of the streaming use, use cases for a web client, when communicating against the service services over the internet, is really server streaming, and also server streaming is very simple very close to the core RPC semantics. It's largely stateless uh, on the server side. When all the other kind of streaming, like uh, request streaming, bi-directional streaming, or line-live streaming, which require a lot more work beyond what just RPC provides, which means that you know, even we create a, a solution that work, you know, that support those kind of streaming modes, you as an application developer still need to understand and you know how to deal with you know, this reliability and scalability, and those things are very unique to the stream, the nature of the streaming being stateful uh, uh, solutions. Then the second part is that we want this to work everywhere. What, what that means is the GRPC web client uh, should work on very old browsers, like IE at the time. It needs to work from different networking environment, uh, which means that different HTTP versions or in some cases, firewalls uh, may block, block certain versions, and also work from those so-called uh, cross-platform web clients, for example, Reactive Native, which is also used on mobile clients, but otherwise we consider this as a web platform. So we wanted this solution to be simple for applications so that they don't have to worry about when this solution will work or will not work, right? Uh, and that's very important to go for us. So this is this is all the sort of the background I want to cover today. And then the next I'll talk about what we learned uh, from the past you know four or five years after we uh, launched this project. So first, we at the time made a decision that this solution has to work for both Google's own internal applications and also for external you know applications, which mean you know applications you guys build using GitHub open source releases. And uh, what we noticed that is this is a very significant benefit for a lot of our users because now they trust that this solution also works for Google and they're more confident to use it in their production uh, as part of their production solution. Uh, if you look at the, you know, the diagram, uh, the overall, the gRPC, you know, we don't have a lot of signals to actually measure the, the the adoption of gRPC web. So, so this is just one of the uh, signals which, which is very easy to get is the number of stars. But if you look at that, the red one is Java, uh, the blue one is for web, and then the yellow one is for node. 
and the overall, you know, the adoption of the Japanese web has been pretty steady and uh, keep growing. However, such an approach, it does have its own challenges for us. Uh, specifically, now we have to make trade-offs between taking new features, exposing new APIs versus the code size increases. Now, for internal Google's own applications, you can imagine, for example, like chat, Gmail, or search, code size is very important. Uh, usually, it's most critical performance metrics. When for external developers, you know, we you have the a very you know wide spectrum of users, right? Some may not care about code size as much. Uh, then the other part of the overhead is really keep the the code repository in, in sync. And uh, you know any kind of bi-directional code sync between an external repository and an internal repository, like the one used by Google, you know the Google's own internal applications, uh, it's a very complicated just process-wise how to deal with you know rollback, how to detect issues, and, and how to do merge and do patching, managing releases, and that does uh, provide you know it does present a lot of challenges for us. And which also, as a result, costs uh, us really very careful to release any new features. Uh, we want to make sure that this is as stable as possible. It works very reliably for both Google's, you know, own applications and uh, uh, external web applications. The second lessons we, we learned is that you know, gRPC Web rely on two K Google only technologies, and that does cause a lot of issues for our users, which we didn't quite expect at the beginning. Uh, so the first one is the Google Closure Library and the Compiler. And this turns out to be a very you know, Google-only technology today. Uh, as any like web framework, it's very opinionated in terms of style, conventions, and trade-offs. And this all doesn't always work for other developers. Uh, so for that, we don't really, you know, we will stick with uh, this Google Closure Library and Compiler because we wanted this thing to also work for, you know, Google applications. But we tried to hide this as more or less as an internal implementation detail. Uh, hopefully that we can reduce the, uh, you know, the user friction caused by other dependencies on Google Closures. Now, the second one is, is the issue there is more significant, which is the protobuf itself. So we, gRPC Web, uh, relies and exposes the, the Google protobuf JavaScript. Its open source version, unfortunately, does not provide the best user experience, uh, neither the performance. So we don't really have an uh, immediate solution. I'll talk about this briefly uh, when we talk about the roadmap. But overall, you know, this is sort of the lessons we learned when you create a solution that you want used by both, you know, uh, Google applications, but also open source external applications, you know, now you have these kind of trade-offs and, uh, you know, it's a, it's one of those cases, one size doesn't really fit all. Uh, then the last part about the lessons is, you know, when, when we look at the design goals uh, we made at the time, uh, looking back, we feel like we made some uh, reasonable decisions, specifically on the server side, as Envoy become more and more popular and especially easier to deploy in the so-called cloud-native or Kubernetes environment. Our original concern that you know, requiring a proxy will cause all the deployment overhead doesn't seem to be a real user experience concern. Uh, what we heard from users is, yeah, deploying Envoy is very easy and it doesn't really cause any problems for most of the users. The second one is the in-process uh, sort of translation between gRPC web and uh, the RPC handlers. Uh, at the time, we basically made the decision not to implement gRPC web directly in different languages. However, for languages that they do, they implement gRPC on top of the web platform. Or web frameworks. In that case, gRPC Web and the gRPC become two parallel stack on top of the language native web frameworks. And in that case, yeah, proxy become unnecessary. And that has been the case for .NET, Swift, and Dart. 
and that kind of matches our vision at the time. Uh, for these three languages, gRPC Web and gRPC kind of in, implemented seamlessly against the web framework, and they will invoke the RPC handler also seamlessly. Uh, in that case, Envoy is not needed. Uh, the, the, the other goal we had is basically we want to just keep gRPC Web as a web-only solution. This is not a general fallback for gRPC. We don't want people to use gRPC Web because gRPC, for example, does not work on embedded system or in some environment, or people don't like how we implemented uh, the APIs or anything like that. And for that, we was in, we envisioned that you know the ecosystem will pick up and create some solution to sort of bridge the gap, and that has been happening. Uh, there's a popular gateway like the gRPC gateway, uh, which provided a very good solution that you know you can write the REST clients and that will interact uh, with the gRPC server transparently. So overall, for us, is we try to make sure that the gRPC web uh, as an official solution focuses on the core values, and we make very diligent trade-off between complexity, code size, and features. Uh, one example is in Google, you know every one kilobyte of code size increase uh, will generate alert. You know, we have to justify what is the, why we're doing that, you know, what is the value provided by this actual one kilobytes of code. Uh, so, so yeah, so this tells you, you know, we really try very hard to uh, make the trade off. Uh, next, well, I'm going to just uh, briefly talk about the roadmaps. Uh, one of the most requested features you can imagine is the streaming support. Uh, so what happens is at this point, we decide that gRPC Web will only be providing server streaming support over HTTP. Uh, the reason we made this decision is that we did a, we worked with the clone team and did a so-called origin trial. So this is like office, you know, this is like some kind of experiments we can enable from Chrome against live traffic. Uh, in this case, you know, any Gmail traffic, which will use this to sort of do the experiments. Unfortunately, the experiment failed to conclude that it is safe to enable current streaming uh, over HTTP 1.1 from a browser, from Chrome. Uh, what that means is that if we support like a request streaming using the fetch streaming APIs as provided by you know, web platforms, when the underlying protocol is HTTP 1.1, the library, the RPC library, will have to do some kind of fallback uh, to disable streaming, and this will greatly increase overhead. And also, HTTP 2 only works with HTTPS, so if we want to do plain text HTTP, then there's no HTTP 2 as well. So, because of all these reasons, so yeah, we decided not to pursue uh, request streaming support uh, with the fetch streams API. Uh, we plan to support web transport over Quick specifically uh, to support a full duplex streaming at some point. Uh, this will also cover and enable request streaming. Uh, web transport, because it's Quick based, it does provide latency improvements, and also web transport also provides some default fallback. So we believe that there's enough value to justify uh, to support this extra transport in addition to HTTP. So we're looking to that. We'll keep you updated as we make more progresses. So, and then uh, the next one is the protobuf. So we are working with our internal protobuf team as well as external protobuf JavaScript projects, uh, try to figure out uh, some kind of roadmap and also migration paths, uh, depending on how we decided to support, you know, to integrate it, put above JavaScript and the gRPC web. Uh, in addition to the put above JavaScript messages, uh, we also think it may be beneficial to support the JSON messages, uh, especially if we don't have a clear roadmap or migration pass uh, on put above JavaScript in, a, in the short time frame, which allows us to provide the best user experience. In that case, we may, you know, decide to decouple gRPC web and the protobuf messages and allow uh, applications to actually just using uh, the standard JSON messages, which is also part of the protobuf spec. The second thing uh, related to protobuf is uh, we try to 
make more alignment between Node and the web. Uh, a little bit of history about the gRPC JavaScript, the so-called gRPC JS, which is designed for Node. Uh, Google internally does not use Node as a server-side language. So as a result, gRPC Node actually uses a different protobuf uh, library, and also the APIs are different. Uh, so we like to get into a position that the gRPC Node users and gRPC Web users, they can have the same kind of protobuf experience if they choose to. So what that means is uh, we may try to uh, provide different options uh, to for gRPC Web. So you know, a gRPC web users may decide to uh, have use its own customer version of protobuf instead of we mandate a particular uh, protobuf JavaScript library on implementation. So we're looking into that and together with uh, also the gRPC node team. Uh, now, gRPC web and gRPC node at the API surfaces was always designed to be aligned. For example, the gRPC web, uh, the streams API actually copy the exact uh, no streams uh, API spec instead of exposing the so-called world web streams, which are def you know which are defined in, uh, by the web platform. Uh, lastly, I want to just touch base quickly about the ecosystem. E ecosystems. Uh, there are two things. One is on the server side. As gRPC web become more stable and mature, uh, users start looking to other functionalities, things like sec different security features or all those things. Uh, we don't really have a standard solution at this point. We like to uh, release with gRPC web, mostly because uh, our internal versions are not quite uh, suitable for external users or vice versa. So what we think we can do is to improve the overall eco ecosystem, is to document some specs or publish some guidelines so that you know features implemented in Envoy versus features implemented in, let's say, .NET, .dot, uh, they have some kind of consistency and the clients can also interact with those different web frameworks um, in a more portable ways. So that's something we are looking to that. Then the second part is the so-called client-side web frameworks. Uh, over the years, so we've been working with uh, you know, o you know, project owners from Flutter, Angular, uh, also Reactive Native, uh, make sure that gRPC Web will work uh, from those frameworks more seamlessly. Uh, I believe today you can use gRPC Web from all those frameworks, but we're looking to make sure that the overall experience is more aligned, you know, more seamless, uh, more seamlessly for developers. Uh, the other thing is, is more try to make sure that the gRPC implementation itself uh, is more unified. Uh, one area we, look, we have been looking at is the gRPC web on Dart. Uh, today, the gRPC web client on Dart is implemented in Dart. Uh, our goal is to make to have the Dart client wrap the JavaScript client, which we designed and implemented for you know, the, the standard web clients. Uh, the reason is that the gRPC web protocol and transport and the feature sets will evolve. Uh, for example, if when we started to support the web transport, we like, you know, the Dart clients automatically get those features as opposed to try to re-imprint everything. Uh, this will also make uh, things easier, for example, make, you know, patching and uh, releases uh, easier. So that's something we are also looking to that. So this uh, concludes the the you know the the main top part of the roadmap discussions I like to uh, share with you. Uh, if you want to reach us, uh, just go to the gRPC uh, the GitHub.com slash gRPC slash gRPC web and post your feedback questions on the web uh, on the GitHub repository directory. We will try to get back to you as soon as possible. Uh, so that's all I have today. Thank you so much.